Hey everyone, this is Kevin from Kevin's Micro Fleet. Today I'm coming to you with a Micro Galaxy Squadron review. We're going to be taking a look at the Episode 1 uh, Gungan Sub. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the figure, at the vehicle. We'll take a look at the stand it actually comes with, the packaging. We'll do some measurements and we'll do a comparison. Let's go ahead and dive into the review. So let's go ahead and start here with the packaging. So here on the front, you can obviously see the only at target. Um, you also have this little image here of how the tail attaches to this vehicle. You get this really cool episode tw uh, episode 1 25th anniversary sticker, your episode 1 collection there on the bottom, and then you've got the Gungan Bongo summary number 151. As we turn this to the side, you get some great box art there on the side, as well as the back here shows all of the different features to this vehicle and what you can do with it. Turn around to this side and it doesn't have anything else on the bottom. It's got the UPC if you want that. So let's go ahead and break this out of the box. So now that I have this out of the box, there is one other piece of the packaging, which is this uh, underwater scene here that you get, uh, which is pretty nice looking. So that's cool for a display piece if you wanted to do that. So here is the actual vehicle as well as the stand. So let's start by just assembling this. And the way that this goes together, you can see that um, it's got a little clip. So similar to other vehicles, when you attach this thing, it is not designed to come back apart. So we'll go ahead and just plug this in here. Looks like there's no specific way to do that. So there you go, it is plugged in now. So now that we have this assembled, let's go ahead and start here with the stand. So this is great that we get another stand. The one thing that is really nice about the stands that they have been doing is that most of them do have this ball and socket joint on it, which is really nice for being able to pose the vehicle in lots of different positions. But here you can see this has got a pretty, pretty cool blue hue to it, as if it's underwater, like this would typically be. And the design here matches similar to what uh, Micro Galaxy Squadron has done with the other stands. So that is that. So, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the figures. So the first figure we're looking at here is um, Obi-Wan. So you can see here um, the sculpt on this is really nice. They did a great job there with the robe and uh, being able to get all the wrinkles in it. You've got a lightsaber on the front of him. You can see his hair tail here. I feel like they might have gone just a little bit crazy there with making that pretty long. Um, it typically isn't that long in the movie. And you can see a little bit of the paint from the face got over onto that, uh, that tail there on the side of his head. But overall, this looks uh, really, really good. Um, he is actually going to be one inch tall, just like all of the other figures. And then we also get Jar Jar Binks. So... Um, now, this is our first Gungan that we're getting in this line, and again, he looks really, really good. They did a great job there with the face, with trying to uh, get the eyes on there. It looks like the eyes are actually painted on, which looks really nice. Great detail there on, the, on his ears, on the back, and on the feet. I mean, again, really nice job. So he is also going to be one inch and be just a smidge taller than one inch maybe not quite an inch and an eighth just with uh, his eyes being on there um now i wanted to just really quick do a comparison of obi-wan to the old action fleet obi-wan that we get now action fleet the figures are just slightly bigger than the one inch scale so they're going to be uh an inch and an eighth tall but uh, here we get a chance to see them next to one another. And there's one where it's a little more accurate there in terms of the length of his tail. But you can obviously see that he's much bigger. He's actually in an action pose. This is the one from the, um, the final battle generator uh, mini scene with Darth Maul. And he's obviously got a lightsaber as well. But uh, not bad. So now... Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual vehicle. So here is the sub, and they did a great job with this. The one thing that I, I didn't see until I actually took this thing out of the box was all of the detail that they have. I mean, all of these little um, 
This like little embossing that they have here on the back looks really nice as well as back here. Looks really good. When you look at it from the front, you get a chance to see that yellow really pops like it's the lights. Um, and there's just so much more detail too. Even on the bottom, you get that same texture on it as well as, you know, all of this detail. And, uh, and then we'll get to that here in a minute. And then this part right here is transparent, which looks really cool. You get a chance to see the fins that are in there, like it's an organic piece. Uh, really like how they did that too. Now, if we look at this from a features perspective, so you've got uh, a few different cockpits here, or a few different opening components to it. So here's your cockpit that you have. And so you have your two different seats there, as well as the one in the back. Uh, for Jar Jar. And then these two pieces here in the movies, it's filled with a bunch of cargo stuff. So it was interesting to see that they decided to do this with seats. And in some of the, um, the vehicle books that are published out there, it does show seats in there. So it does make sense that they would do that. Um, it's just one of those things that hopefully we get some other figures in the future to be able to fill that in. But those are your um, opening cockpits and seats. And you can hear that it has this nice satisfying click when it goes in. As you come around here to the tail, the tails here are, um, they are kind of like a softer plastic. You can bend it. I mean, you can see I can do that. But it's not really like a rubbery type of material. So I would expect this to hold its shape over time. Um, which is great. So some of the different uh, vehicles that you could get or different subs like that, they could have this as like a rubbery type of material. And because it's so long, it would end up drooping over time, which this won't do that. And so then you saw as I put this together that there is a gear on here. So underneath you have this little spin wheel to be able to spin the tail around, which looks really cool. That's a great feature. I'm glad that they added that in there. And then um, let's do some measurements on this first, and then we'll go ahead and put it on the stand and show some of the different poses that you can get out of it. So um, first, if we're going side to side here, this is about six and a half inches. And from front to back, it's really long. So um, this is about 14 inches. And this is rivaling the size of what we're getting with the U-Wing. When you actually open up the U-Wing's wings, they get really wide as well. So great to be able to get some bigger vehicles that are still at kind of a, a micro type of a scale. And then top to bottom here, gosh, it's really hard to measure this thing. That's maybe two inches from top to bottom. Now let's go ahead and put this thing on the stand so that way we can see what it looks like for it to be posed. Okay, so I got it on there. It did take quite a bit of force to get it on. Um, you, you do want to be careful as you're putting that on there. You could push this thing hard enough to break it. Um, so I could see maybe even just a tiny little bit of a stress mark there as I was trying to get that thing in there. It doesn't really click in like I would have expected it to do with a ball and socket joint where you feel it kind of pop. Um, it just feels like it's stuck. So either way. But you can move this thing around into lots of different positions, which is really cool. And then if we look at just how high this thing sits, it's sitting like three and three quarter inches off the, the table from the bottom of the stand all the way to this top part. And it's like roughly in that range. So now let's go ahead and compare this to a couple of the other Gungan subs that we got. So the first one is the Action Fleet version. So with the Action Fleet version, I would have expected before seeing this and before seeing some of the diagrams of this, that we would get a vehicle that would look similar to a Starfighter class vehicle that would be like this. You can see here you've got Qui-Gon Jinn in there, as well as you have some of those different cargo spaces um, that you can see. So if we open that up, you get a chance to see what that looks like on the interior of it. And then you get Qui-Gon Jinn with his head turned at 90 degrees, which is pretty funny. That's for a different, uh, the reason for that is that we can discuss at a different time. But anyways, um, so that's what I would have expected. 
Seeing it this way, this does look much better, bigger than it would be in a smaller scale like this. Now with this one, it has similar type of material here on the back. So it is kind of like a soft uh, plastic. And then you have wheels on the bottom of this. And the way that this functions is as the wheels roll, uh, if you were rolling this along the table, the back moves, which is very cool. I do like that they had that feature in there. Obviously not as practical in the scenario of what Micro Galaxy Squadron is trying to do, where they're trying to limit some of those gimmicks. Now, the other thing is when I first started to see this compared to some other vehicles in the line, the first thing I thought of was this other Gunkin sub here, which is actually the Micro Machines Transforming Playset. And you can see from a size perspective, they're actually close. So the uh, Micro Machines one is, is bigger, obviously, and it does a lot more than that one does too. So this thing opens up quite a bit. So this part opens up, you actually can pull the whole tail up as well. And then you get the pilots in there. This, these uh, little things up here on the top come down like a mobile, and then you have a bunch of other features to it. So obviously this is a uh, play set, so you're gonna have a lot more components to this than you would in something else. If you have never seen this before, I would highly recommend picking it up. It is one of my favorite play sets that they have. It's so cool that they were able to convert this sub into an actual play set. But either way, uh, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. Now, I want to grab one other vehicle to be able to show a comparison of this to a couple other Micro Galaxy Squadron vehicles that are in the line just to give some size comparison. So now we have the sub compared to um, two different vehicles. So we've got the Millennium Falcon first, just to be able to show how big it is relative to the Falcon. So obviously the entire hull of the vehicle is not the same size, but from a length perspective, from front to back, you can see it's much longer, which I would not have expected. Now, obviously the Millennium Falcon is not perfectly in scale anyways, but I was surprised to see that the Gungan sub is that much bigger than uh, the Falcon. So you can check out uh, Rebel Scale. Um, my friend Jonathan has got the scale of all of these vehicles, so you'll be able to see, you know, which one's scale relative to another. But then here is your standard Series 1 X-Wing compared to it as well. So you can see the X-Wing is... Uh, I'd say reasonably scaled relative to this, but it is what it is. So that's all I've got for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Check out the Amazon affiliate links that I have for other Micro Galaxy Squadron toys, as well as my Etsy page in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to catching everybody on the next review.